another community is in disbelief, shocked by devastating violence. We've come to the conclusion this is just absolutely pure evil. This has been a day we've seen the worst in humanity. Tomorrow is going to bring out the best in humanity as we come together to move forward from this unspeakable tragedy. You are listening to Darkest America and the Way Out. This is a Lord's Army Radio Dispatch. In this particular series, we're going to highlight some of the problems facing our country. And we're going to discuss the ultimate solutions. Get ready for Darkest America and the Way Out from lordsarmy.org. This is a listener-supported podcast. We are currently a nation in isolation because of the COVID-19 virus. A large portion of the population is working from home. Another large portion of the population is out of work entirely. Schools are closed. Restaurants are closed. Most stores are closed. Parks are closed. And nearly every concert and event has been canceled. Those fortunate enough to have houses are finding themselves confined to them. So... Since we are a nation confined to our houses, let's talk about how you can change the world from your house. Christianity and illness have a long and fascinating history together. After all, it was the Bible that first told us to wash our hands and to keep unsanitary things away from the heart of the city. It was the priests who were the ones to identify if someone was sick with leprosy And of course, it is none other than our Lord who healed many of the sick during his earthly ministry. This history, together, continued long after the time recorded in Scripture. Throughout the plagues of centuries past, the Christians were the ones to make a name for themselves. It seems that when everyone was running from danger, it was the Christians that remained to offer a helping hand. Last week, we talked about Christian hospitality and how a city like Asheville, North Carolina, could be won back through Christian hospitality. Did you ever notice that the word hospital is in the word hospitality? That's because they actually come from the same Latin word, which is hospitale, meaning guest house or inn. Remember, as a born-again Christian, you have a ministry. You have a responsibility to live the gospel out in every aspect of your life. So what role should your house play in your ministry? The goal behind all of it is to not waste, to not waste time, uh, to not waste resources um, apart from mission, right? Uh, So we're rolling these resources into being gospel intentioned or, or uh, being uh, kingdom ad- advancing, right? right? So if you take uh, the largest point of your time, what are you, what are you spending it on? Um, that, that depends on the kind of person that you are, what occupation you have. Right. Um, how can you leverage that for the gospel uh, as uh, in hospitality? Um, if we want to take a, a more strict uh, definition uh, as we would think of it uh, culturally as hospitality we would say um, how do we invite others into our home well for a lot of us our our monthly budget you know as you look at our dollars spent the largest amount of our funds is spent on our shelter you know sure. and what do we rent uh, you know paying a mortgage um, that's that's going to be uh, a large amount of our budget so if that isn't being leveraged for the gospel, uh, if it's not being um, used as a means of mission, uh, then it's a it's an issue of stewardship, mm. right? Um, so I need to be inviting others uh, into my home, uh, which at times can be my sanctuary, a place sure. for me to escape, right? right. Um, but it shouldn't be uh, the place that I spend two thirds of my time in, uh, a place of not being on mission or, or, or not advancing the gospel. In case you didn't recognize his voice, we're talking this week again to Ross Smith. I'm Ross Smith. Um, I'm pastor of worship and families at Grace Baptist West Asheville. 
Um, I have a wife named Sarah and two little girls. One's five and the other three months. Uh, my five-year-old's named Autumn and my three-month-old's named Edith. Uh, we've been here in West Asheville since October of 2018. And uh, yes, we're serving in a revitalization called Grace Baptist um, in the heart of West Asheville. The gospel should shape everything you do in your life. It should shape your relationship with others and how you live around them. For some of us, well, okay, most of us, we likely have relationships with people in our lives who we know we should be witnessing to, and we haven't yet. It happens, but we need to stop it. Yeah, that, that's that's a challenge in itself. It's like when you have an established relationship with somebody and all of a sudden you bring the gospel in, which, which reveals the issues with uh, relational evangelism, right? If you have this relationship that's been established and the gospel's not been there, well, where is this all of a sudden and why is it, why has it not been here? Right, exactly. You know, um, <laughs> wait a minute, you've, you've, <laughs> you, the last time we met, uh, you know, for example, right. uh, you, you knew that I was going to hell. For an eternity, right? And I left your I just home. Started caring, I, I, right? <laughs> and I, and you and I left your home in a car, and, and people die in car wrecks. All you know. So, um, yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's a challenge. Um, now, uh, you know, saying that, of course, it that's an absurdity. Uh, we wouldn't say that. You know, we need to uh, get the gospel out in its entirety every time we establish. You know, or have a meeting with someone. Uh, it would be very laborious. You know, um, sure. and you'd find yourself cramming it in at the end of your meetings. You know. Um, <laughs> Uh, but what we're, what we're saying is inviting others into gospel-intentioned life. If you're a Christian, the gospel is a part of your life. Uh, it's putting into words um, uh, how you're living um, in a meaningful way. Uh, you know, why are you living uh, the way that you're living um, in this in this moment, in this instance, in this issue? And, and you have the ability to say what that is. Um, it's taking uh, things that people say in their in their own life and and you saying okay if I were in that situation as a gospel intention person how am I going to live you know um, and th- that allows you then uh, to accomplish th- what Christ commands which is uh, teach all that he has commanded us um, so uh, you have, uh, when you establish a relationship with someone and you know them well enough and they're a friend and uh, you know a stranger becomes a friend and a friend be the family of God you're you're able to listen and know what's going on <clears throat> in their life and and it gives you two lives and two opportunities to apply the gospel to your own and theirs right um, so that that's the idea behind uh, hospitality is getting to know people well enough that that it gives you um, enough conversational resources to get to the gospel. When you invite others into your life, it's impossible not to witness to them, provided that the gospel is indeed a part of your life. When you are intentional about looking for ways to invite others in, you'll find plenty of opportunities. For example, when my wife heard that schools and daycares were closing, she realized that a lot of working parents are going to be in a desperate situation. Think of it. Imagine you're a working parent whose livelihood is dependent on working, and then all of a sudden you find out that the child care that makes your work possible has suddenly gone away. In South Carolina, it was not until late Sunday night that the closures were announced. Imagine you're going to work Monday morning, and Sunday night you find out that suddenly you have no child care. So recognizing the need... My wife reached out to a few families to op- for us to offer to watch their kids for free. Keep in mind, we already have three kids at home regularly. But this simple action provided a major help to a few families in need. And it provided a way for us to easily and lovingly have those gospel conversations. This is a type of evangelism. This is the type of evangelism or at least one type of evangelism that we see throughout Scripture. As we look at the the text, the Scripture, for methods of evangelism that worked in the early church that is similar, similar contextually to the kind of context we're in today, 
uh, you see those two methods. You see street preaching, you see um, hospitality. Hospitality, however, I would argue, uh, is uh, not just seen in narrative form, uh, but in in command and in, in imperative. Mm. Um, so uh, there's a couple places you'll find this. Um, you'll find it in Romans chapter 12. Um, you know, in Romans chapter 12, you know, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to offer living sacrifices. So he's telling Christians uh, now in application how they're to live a gospel intention life. Right. And for, uh, I believe, yeah, 13, 13 <laughs> and a, uh, or 12 and a half verses. Yeah, that's what it is. Halfway through 13, uh, he's speaking to gospel application amongst believers and then there's a shift in verse 13 um, when he mentions uh, hospitality he says uh, contribute to the needs of the saints uh, and seek to show hospitality right um, that moment is a, is a shift because in the Greek the, the word hospitality means kindness to strangers right so uh, you have this inward look in those beginning verses and in the second you have an outward how do you live in the world how does the gospel apply when you're outside of the the gathering um, outside of the assembly so um, the understanding for the early church was kindness to strangers kindness to unbelievers kindness to outsiders right um, and you know that's essentially how we're talking about hospitality and the, and the goal uh, in it, uh, in our conversation today, is is not just with believers, but primarily with unbelievers. Um, and following that verse, uh, you have uh, bless those who persecute you and do not curse them. Right. The word uh, for persecute is uh, similar in the Greek to seek to show hospitality. So there's this understanding of Paul, and he's using this word play to emphasize the the necessity to chase, to go after, uh, to get and find and, and search for uh, strangers to be kind to. Uh, in Got the it. same way that they chase you down to persecute you, <laughs> you are to chase them down to share the gospel. If each of us, as Christians, look for opportunities to chase down others in love and good works, Imagine, we could help millions and absolutely change the world. There's a reason that virtually every hospital in the Western world was originally founded by a Christian organization. We should be the ones to feed the hungry, to comfort the hurting, to clothe the cold, to love the lonely, and to care for the sick. And when we do those good works... We are given a platform from which we can share the gospel in a loving and meaningful way. And remember that you are not alone in your efforts when you labor in this way. You look at the the role of the Holy Spirit uh, as as it's proclaimed in um, the the upper room discourse, right? Um, you, you have. Uh, a couple chapters, a couple sections that talk about the Holy Spirit there, and it, it, it says that He will convict the world of sin, um, and that's through the proclamation of the Word, right? Right. Um, so, uh, in, in a sense, we have this uh, urgency and, and this need uh, to get the Word out, uh, and and indeed, uh, there is a sense in which uh, there's a piercing of the heart. There's, um, you know. Uh, a, a double-edged sword, right, piercing to the division of, of soul right. and of spirit, um, that brings about uh, a, a need and understanding uh, in those who have been called uh, by God to call out upon a Savior, right? Um, and and that is uh, the idea when we say, okay, we ought to seek to show, we ought to pursue, we ought to chase. Um, and you see that in, in its multiple contexts. You see that uh, as it's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 13, um, also in the qualifications of an elder or, or a pastor. Right. Uh, it says he is to be hospitable. 
uh, that that definition is the same. So in our ordination ceremonies, there ought to be a question. You know, we have to give someone, you know, people someone to imitate. And I believe pastors have even lost this uh, discipline themselves and ought to rediscover it. Um, but a question for a qualified pastor, according to the qualifications of an elder, is when is the last time you had a stranger in your home? Uh, when was the last time uh, you showed kindness to a stranger? Um, that's a good uh, good question uh, that if we rediscover this church-wide, we'll rediscover uh, mission church-wide and rediscover a way to, to reach a lost and dying world. This is how we are commanded to change the world. Look for opportunities to do good for others. Then do that work and share the gospel. In this way, we keep the two great commandments, which are to love God and to love other people. As our nation has been changed by the social distancing and isolation brought about by the coronavirus, there are many opportunities to do good works. People are searching for answers to some pretty tough questions, and it is us Christians that know the truth. Take action. Thank you for listening. This concludes this particular dispatch from the front lines of the Lord's Army. If you want more information or content, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and on Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Apply what you have learned in this episode. Remember, you do not become a great man or woman in Christ without taking action. One easy way you can help spread the gospel right now is by subscribing to our podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. Also, just by liking us and leaving us a review, you can have a massive impact in how many people we reach. Go out there. Take action. Join the battle. LordsArmy.org.